Okay. Um, all right. So um, welcome back to this week's tutorial. This week's tutorial will be discussing more on um, some of the Python syntaxes, like conditionals, loops, iterations, all those kinds of things. So um, now um, to gauge um, your understanding of today's tutorial, let's do some checks, okay? So um, please use the reaction button, right? Use the reaction button and press the green check mark if you've done the tutorial this week. Uh, the rock, the red cross. If you haven't done the, the this week's tutorial, Ooh. Ooh, okay. Oh, everyone has done the tutorial. Wonderful. Okay, so with that, like I think today will be, um, because most of you have done your tutorial. Uh, I'll just be asking you guys questions. Um. I'll be asking you guys questions and you guys can answer. Lah. So we can at least learn from each other. Lah. Don't worry if you're not, if you don't have the answers right or anything, that's not a big problem. Because we're all here are learning. Uh, in the meantime, um, hold on, where is it? Okay, I've made this Telegram group for everyone to join in. So, um, wait. Oh, okay, see, okay, so, um, hmm. ah, okay, so everyone, if you can try to join this group, I'll just send the link to the chat. So, this group will be used for us to discuss any uh, questions regarding tutorials, assignments. Uh, midterms, finals, anything lah. So if you guys uh want, just join the Telegram group group so we can discuss uh, many things there. Okay. All right. So let's just uh kick kick things off. Um, today we'll be learning about uh we'll be reviewing on conditionals. You can see uh in the conditionals there are three ways, not really three ways, right? That you can write it. But the idea is that um, in a conditional, the most required part is the if statement, the top part. Uh, any conditionals can exist without else or l if. But the what the if is a required one, and then on top of that, the uh, the rest is just bonus lah. If l if l if else, even if, with l if right, you can you can just skip the else. It's optional. Okay, and then there's also repetition. There are two types of repetition using the while loop and the for loop. Now, uh, the way they work is a bit different. Um, in while loop, uh, the statements below the while loop will keep on repeating until the state until the statement here is false. All right. While in the for loop, the number of iterations are fixed. All right, so of course, like when you have a fixed number of iterations, so you need to iterate a hundred times. You can also use the while loop, right? But then, um, it is not advisable because um, generally the purpose of while loop is used for you to actually iterate through your uh to repeat your code multiple times until a certain condition is met, where you do not know the number of times needed to meet that condition. So when there's uncertainty in play, you use the while loop, but when things are certain, you, you always try to use the for loop because the for loop is much more structured, much more rigid, much more uh, narrow in scope so that, um, that although it's much more difficult to write, but then like the code will be much cleaner, much more understandable and less prone to bugs. So, um, We'll start off with the first question, right? And then uh, I'll call on people from the list of participants. And in this case, I would like to start from the top uh, to answer. So for question one, can we have Aryan uh, to answer yeah. to help? Okay. So the first one is okay. <clears throat> the syntax and everything is correct. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. The second one, the syntax is correct, but it's a useless function. It doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. for B. 
uh, C, it's missing a bracket for your parameters, so it's incorrect. Uh, D, uh, define is not part of the syntax for Python. It's supposed to be DEF instead of define. Uh -huh. uh, e is fine. And then D, I mean, F is missing an indent on the return. Okay. So F is not fine because it's missing an indent. Anything else wrong with F? Uh, uh, there's also a semicolon. Yes, the semicolon here is also missing. All right, pretty straightforward. Uh, anyone have any questions regarding question one? Does anyone have a different answer? Nope. Okay, moving on. Question two. Um, uh, Brian, can we have uh? Can you help us do question two? Um, the answer just yeah. Because like full full one five, it prints nothing. And full full two, it will go under the else condition. So pin yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Let's trace the code one by one. Huh? Uh let's do full one first. So first let's do full one five first. Anyway. Let's do full one five first. Okay. Uh how how would how would Python run the code here? Um like the you run the first if statement first. Mm -hmm. And then what does it evaluate to? Okay, wait. <laughs> uh Oh, you pin, you pin, yeah. Is it? Hold on, hold on. Don't uh help. Uh, don't rush the conclusions first, cause we wanna like go through it slowly. To explain to the class. So like after the first statement is evaluated, right? What is going to be the result? Oh, it's true. True, right? Then, uh, what's next? So it means the uh, entire chunk here is being executed, right? The entire chunk. Yeah, then, so, so the second if will be false. Okay, uh, that is weird. That must be my internet. I apologize. That must be my internet. I'm so sorry about it. Uh, hold on. Okay, um, uh, Brian, sorry, I, I didn't catch you. My apologies, but can you help me out again with question two? Uh, question two, foo two. Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, foo one means, uh, yeah, then for foo two, the first if statement is true, but then when it goes to the second one, then it will be false. So, mm -hmm. it doesn't print anything. Yeah, so it doesn't go to the else. So, it doesn't print, mm -hmm. the whole thing doesn't print anything. Yeah. So it doesn't print anything. Uh. This one yeah. is also skipped. Okay. So anyone got questions? Okay, no. Then uh thank you so much, Brent. Uh thank you so much, Brian, for the help with question two. All right. Uh next up we have question three. Uh uh Jin, can you help us with question three? Uh okay. Um 
So uh, x is two, right? Mm -hmm. So double uh, bracket square two. This one is uh, basically four times uh, two times four. Mm -hmm. Because it... yeah, so it's the square two is two two square yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then minus uh four square. This one is uh, is two plus two right into four. Yes. And then four then times four. four. Yeah. So the answer would be negative eight. Negative eight. Anyone has a different answer? Okay. So. The question seems so straightforward, right? So um follow-up question. Why do we need to use why do we use functions when like it could be as simple as like I could just like write um like two times two like yeah. Uh I, I guess if you want to define x as something else. Mm -hmm. maybe three or four then you can just use the function instead of writing the code again like the long code yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. correct correct uh first is if you want to modify the input it's very easy any other reasons that you would use a function uh i guess it will make your code shorter and easier to read mm -hmm. shorter code and easier to read any anything else or maybe from the rest you can just write in the chat okay there's someone in the chat uh you can use your code elsewhere yes three uh, uh reuse code okay uh looking at the code you understand your code better yeah easy to easier to read i guess the most important reason right i think at least is uh okay like all these four points are quite similar and somewhat overlapping with each other but i think the most important part of why to reuse functions is because say one day a stupid guy changes the definition of square all right from once x times x right becomes x times x times x i know this is cube lah, but then somehow we suddenly change the definition of square Later on, if you do not use functions, right, or everything that uses the definition of square, right, will you need to change it manually like, from this to this. If you just change it here, times x, right, every single code will automatically be updated. So it's much easier for you to maintain your large code base while, while trying to prevent bugs. Because uh. like sometimes if you forgot to change some parts, your code will be buggy or broken. This is very important, especially when you're already like maintaining a very big project. Okay. So yeah, um, lastly is probably like um uh, easier to maintain. Less prone to bugs. So that's why we really love to use like functions, trying to like any common common features or function uh, math uh, steps, we'll just save it in a function so it can be reused in the future. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Um, all right. I'll skip question four first and I'll put, I will we'll go through question four last because I feel like question four is going to be pretty important. Uh, it's going to be reused in future uh, tutorials as well. So I think I'll just keep it in the last so like we can just pick it up for the next tutorial as well. Now let's move on to question five. Uh, wait. Oh, a bit funky. Okay, question five, we have three parts. It's negative, it's odd, and it's even and positive. So I think we we'll, can have three people for this. Uh, Chi uh, can you have uh question five point five point one? Uh, Robbie, can you have five point two? And then Yvonne, can you have five point three? Okay, Chi go ahead. Uh, so for 
for is negative def, uh, function, I did if x is uh, smaller than zero, then I said return true. And I'll if x is bigger than zero, return false. Hey, can you repeat? I'll if x is bigger than zero, return false. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, anyone have a different answer? Okay. Okay, we uh Hong Han has a different one. The f is negative x return x smaller than zero. Anyone got a different one? Okay, uh, Jatin is the f like neck. Okay, I'll just shorten it to nega. If x equals to zero, return false, else return x zero. Okay, uh, Robbie, before we go to you, um, okay, so I hope you can read my handwriting, which is very terrible. But um, Chiyun, uh, you have your code over here, right? This is your code uh, over here. And then these are your friend's code. Um, there are three different codes that does three different things, right? So, but the thing is like, there's only like one question and one answer. So um, what do you think makes your code different from the rest? And what do you think make each of these three codes different? Oh my God, I, I think mine has both true and false, but like for others, they they didn't return true or false. For the second uh, function, it doesn't say any true or false. Oh, you're saying the second one doesn't return true or false? Okay, the third one? Oh, I think the third, oh, I think all of them returns true or false, actually. Okay, so everything yeah. everything returns true or false. Then? But I think it's just written differently. Okay, so, um, okay. So, um, there are some, when we actually code, right, we should not focus on the function name because the function name doesn't really matter, actually. I can just give a function name, the... Lulu la la land and not and the essence will stay the same. What we really need to focus on is on the definition here. All right. Return true if the input parameter x is negative or false otherwise. So I think this definition is very important because in this case here, right, your code um over here, the first part is already correct. If negative returns true, but then like um it doesn't return false for otherwise. Uh. You only return false for values that are x greater than zero. So what happens when x is equal to zero? Law? Your code will not return any value. The second one is correct. Uh, in fact, it is very compact. Um, the value, remember this are uh, x less than zero. This is a comparison statement, right? This will actually return a Boolean value, true or false. Hence, you can actually just return your code this way. Lah. And then the bottom one, uh, Jatin's code is, uh, generally it's the same with this one, lah, but with the additional of this part, if X equals to zero return false, in which like technically, if he just like returns this, uh, the value zero will also return false. So yes. So uh, I think be very careful lah, with the definition especially in assignment, sometimes the name and what the function actually does, the function name and what the, the function actually does can be very different. So be very careful when you analyze code. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Jiayun. Uh, uh, um, okay. Can I have Robbie for the second one? 
uh, I wrote if x modulo 2 equals to 1 return true, then else return false. x modulo 2 equals 1 return, return else return false. Okay, anyone have it, have a different answer? I don't think so, right? Okay, thanks, Robbie. It's correct. Um, if if we write it in this style, we can also even shorten it to def is odd. Return x modulo two. Remember that uh, x modulo two equals one. This is this is going to be validated to true or false, and then we want to return that. Okay, last is the uh, def is even and and positive. I think. Uh, Yvonne. Uh, uh, I say if x is more than zero and x modulo 2 equals to 0, then return true, else return false. If x is more than 0 and? Uh, x modulo 2 equals to 0. Return true, else return false. Okay. Um, Anyone have a different answer? Okay, Hong Han got uh, death is even and pause return not x equals to zero and Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, I think there's a lot of code in chat. Okay, I'll just uh, put bring the chat over. Okay, so uh, I think we have this one. Def is even and positive return. X not is negative and not is odd. This one is it's the same. This one is the same with uh, Yvonne's answer, but in a shorter version. This one is also if negative it equals to false and x not equals to zero. This actually does not check for odd and even on uh, this one. Yeah, so I think most of your answers are correct. Um, I think... Um, this is the closest probably one what is intended. Right. Um, right. Probably we don't have to check whether x is equal to zero or not. Because in this case, x is prob zero is probably regarded as positive. But then this is the idea that we want to capture in this particular question where we want to be able to reuse the functions that we have defined earlier. As mentioned before, writing functions is very important because we can reuse it multiple times. And when the definition changes, right, it easily auto updates to any other functions or algorithms or procedures that uses the same definition of functions. So if in the, in, for example, in this case, uh, the, um, the definition of is negative means like, any numbers that less than zero, any numbers as big as zero is, any numbers that's not less than zero is considered positive. Hence, that's why we should be using the functions first, the predefined functions first before defining our own thing. Lah. So that one day, if say the definition changes, it will automatically update. Is everyone clear on this? So usually, right, what happens during practical exam, right? Uh, what happens during practical exam? Your question will be like question 1A, 1B, and 1C, right? 
But then later on, right, in 1B and 1C, you will somehow, sometimes, right, there will be a way, sometimes you will need to use the functions that you have defined in 1A as your answer. That's why uh, learning how to reuse which functions and learning when to reuse functions is pretty important because later on, it, it is going to show up in your practical exams where you need to reuse functions that you have defined earlier. And it's also very useful in real life where you actually define actual functions in real life. And when you actually do some software engineering projects where you define some functions to be reused multiple times. Okay. Uh, any questions? No questions, then let's move on. Uh, question six is on arrays. Uh, right. Yeah, sorry, on, uh, it's on iteration. So, um, Anyone want to give, uh, wait, who's next after Yvonne? Oh, Jonathan. Jonathan, can you help us with question six? Uh, I wrote, uh, define some odd numbers, low, comma, high. Uh, first line I wrote, total equals to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, the next line I wrote, for I in range, uh, low, comma, high plus one. Uh, it uh, I put the semicolon. Then if I modulo two equals equals one, then total equals total plus I. Then the last line is written total. Uh, total equals total plus I. And yeah. then return. Return total. Where do uh, in which level of indentation do you return total? Uh, the same as total and four on the first two lines. Okay, uh, same here. Okay. All right. Um, okay, some questions. Uh, first, why do we have total equals to zero in the first place? Uh, I don't know. I just like to put it first. <laughs> I mean, does it change if, it, I, if you put it somewhere else or even don't have this at all? Not really. Really? If say I move this, if I move this line right to this part, this here, wait, does it not change? Like if I move it here. Yeah. Eh? It changed, it changed. Because if you actually move it under the for loop, right, it means that every iteration, right, the total will be reset to zero. Okay. 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 Um, second, if I change the question, right, to the, the product of all, the product of odd numbers, right, will the total still be zero? Product means multiplying everything. Sorry, can you say again? Um, if I change the question into product of odd numbers, does it change? Uh, do the total stays the as zero or should it be of a different value? Say this one becomes multiplication instead of addition. I want to multiply all the odd numbers between low and high. You start as uh, total equals to low. But what if the low is an even number? It should not be included, right? Yeah. Then you cannot use low right for total. Uh, low plus one. Okay. All right. So I guess 
um, if it's a multiplication, you don't use zero. La. Uh, an easy way, an easy fix is to actually you use the value of one. Because any, any numbers multiplied by one is that number. If you multiply by zero, it will be zero, right? So like if say you have the numbers A, B, C, if you want to multiply them, you need to multiply something with total, right? If you multiply, if total is zero, then it will be zero. But if it's one, then like it will still be A, B, C. So when it is, um, you're trying to multiply a series of numbers, you use one. Okay. Um, and then lastly is probably this concept as well. Like uh, why return total is in the same level of indentation with this one, this total. Why is it not in the same level of indentation with the for loop eh, with this if or this? John? Uh, okay. Oh, I, I'm asking. <laughs> because I wrote, I wrote it like that the first time I did. So it should be uh, in line with the if. Is it? Uh, no, la. if it's basically like your answer is correct. <laughs> but then like this, uh, like if you have your answer right you need to understand why is it correct or is it wrong so yes as like as people mentioned la, like if the return total is in the same level of indentation with the if i modulo 2 right then it will actually like before you start summing everything up it will return the total in the first iteration like that if you so that's the idea la, if you actually in the same line of the for loop, it will return at the first iteration. So like after one iteration, then it will immediately return. That's why indentations are pretty important here as some people might forgot where to indent and may indent it uh, in the wrong place. This is correct, this is correct. But then, yeah, la, it's very important for you guys to understand why is it correct? Especially when in midterms or finals, right, your assignment, your questions will be like, Here's some code. Tell me why is it correct or why is it wrong? Or even like, here's some code. Tell me what it does. So you need to try to understand as well uh, what happens. Okay. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Okay. Uh, on to, to question seven. Um, wait, before we move to question seven, are there any questions with question six? Okay, no questions. Thank you so much to everyone that's contributing in the chat. Uh, very insightful answers. Okay, um, next up we have question seven. Um, can we have Juning? I forgot how to pronounce. I think it's Juning. Can you help us with question seven? Uh, D equals to 75. For I in range four, uh, colon. I in range four. Yes. For J in range three, colon. Mm -hmm. Forward D. Left one twenty. Left one twenty. At the same level of indentation as four, mm -hmm. D plus equals to seventy-five. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, do you mind uh, explaining your code a bit? Just a bit. I think it's pretty clear what your code does. Uh, basically, for I in range four means I draw four triangles, then, uh, for J in range three. There's for each individual triangle. I want to draw one side, turn 120, and then do it three times. And then for the D plus equals to 75, this refers to updating the value of D so that the triangles become progressively bigger. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the way he draws it is that he draws this part first and then goes to the second one. 
the third one, and then finally the fourth one. Oh. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, tuning. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any questions regarding question seven? Does anyone have a different solution? Okay, uh, Hong Han has a different solution. Basically, it encapsulates the draw triangle in a function, uh, which is very similar. Um, and then like calls the functions four times, which can be done in a for loop in a similar fashion. Well done, well done. Okay, um, okay, Hannah has a very similar one. And oh, Hannah has an interesting one. For i in 75, 150, 225, and 300, it's very interesting because instead of iterating through a range, it iterates through a list of the uh, dimensions of the triangles. That's a good, uh, that's an interesting answer as well. Uh, yeah, Hannah's and Swati's answer are very similar. Uh, where you iterate through a list. In this case, it's a tuple, in case some of you are already aware of it, but if you're not, it's fine. So yes, I think most of you did a very good job. Um, probably like um, you can also like uh, use for loops like, to make it cleaner. Ooh, PB. Oh, interesting answer. Jo and a function within a function. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways to do it. In fact, actually, right, for question seven or eight, there are no requirements for you to write it in a function. But I'm so happy to see you guys actually using functions. Okay, uh, last is question eight. Um, after Junying, we have Kelly. Do you have Kelly with us? Uh, yeah, the yes, I defined the draw triangle function. Yeah, so that I just use that one. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. So like assume we have the function draw triangle. Okay. Assume we have we have this already. Uh. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, then I yeah, then I just uh copy and paste from the question seven, then uh draw triangle, then I write. 120, then I repeated that twice. Okay, draw triangle, rotate 120, draw triangle, rotate 120, and then draw triangle. Okay. Rotate 120. Is this correct? Uh yeah. And we wrote the last line. Uh, without the last line. Okay. Anyone have a different solution? This is acceptable. This is acceptable. Nope. Okay, so I think has a 4D in range 0, 3. Oh, much more uh, hard-coded, but it's fine. Oh, yeah, just a uh, note, uh, like, if you just wanna, if you're planning to like range zero to n, right? You just simply just write range n. That's fine. Because by default, n all ranges starts from zero. Okay. So if there's no more questions, I think you guys are very good, and you guys have done all the tutorial. Hence, I have additional questions for you. Woo! So um. We've learned these two triangles above, right? And so, and we've learned how to encapsulate them in functions so that we can reuse those functions again. So for example, how Kelly used, uh, just simply put the, uh, tri uh, the code to draw a single triangle inside a function and then call it multiple times. So um, here we have two additional uh, triangles. I think 10 minutes is too short. Let's do this uh, for like almost 20 minutes, roughly until um, 3 p.m. All right, to draw this, okay? Now, um, for this, right, you can reuse the code that you made above. Say, like, you can put all the code that you have defined here into a function, 
and then just call them here down here. In fact, these are just like slight modifications from the above. Let's see if you can figure it out. Now, once you are done, right? Of course, don't just keep it to yourself, right? Because like technically, if you keep it to yourself, I cannot see and probably, oh, uh, TA cannot see. I just not do, right? So in fact, uh, I've made a website for all of you can, to share your code. So uh, go to this website, uh, codeshare.io, where, and then like, uh, if you are already open it, just write your name and then uh, write your code below, okay? Um, try to open code share. Mm, is anyone having difficulties opening it? Okay, so uh, we'll have like around like we'll have around seventeen minutes for you guys to try this part up. Uh, these triangles up, and then after that we'll discuss. You can try to draw one, or you can try to draw the both of them. Um. And then if you have any difficulties, you can feel free to chat me in the chat or just like uh, turn off, turn on your mic and then talk, okay? And then once you're done, just copy your code over to code share. All right, uh, happy drawing everyone. Uh, I'll pause the recording here and then resume later. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see. We have these triangles and then we have these uh, code. So I guess I'll just like call in random. Uh, prioritizing those who hasn't been called uh, in the previous questions to give everyone a chance. Uh, okay. Mm. Let's see. Uh, Okay, uh, hmm. okay, I think it's a bit difficult, but I think I would like to see uh, hmm. Hmm, can I have a Lerhan? Okay. Hey, Lerhan. Okay. Uh, Kindly share what you have uh, written here with the class. Okay, um, for the first, first line uh, for rotation, so that means uh, it's like the number of, like there's one set of three triangles, right? Mm -hmm. So that for rotation, we'll do each of the triangles. So for the for length in 75, 150, 225, I adapted from Another uh, of our students. Uh, mm -hmm. So this for length all the way down, uh, it draws the three triangles at the step one. So the rotation will repeat it and you'll turn 120 so they draw all three triangles. Yeah. If you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically your code is like uh, question seven, but then you do it three times uh, in each ah, rotation. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So he completes the first one, second one, and then the third one. Okay, on to the second diagram, which you share yours as well. Second one, okay. Um, okay, it's, uh, it's similar to the question seven as well. For the, for, if you see for length in 75 to 25, that is the, the one part with the two triangle, small and big triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and after that, for loop, uh, there's a four I in range three. The one, yeah. that one is for the middle size, the medium size triangle. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, so this, yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. Um, for the set, at back at the top, for a set of two, it means I combine one set as the small and big and the medium. So there is like one set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably like this, right? Uh, uh no, no, no. Yeah. I, I. I did the small and big with the medium size. That is one set. 
Oh, wait, hold on. So you did all the small first, is it? Uh, no, like the for, for length is 75 and 225. I did small and big, then medium. Yeah, small. Yeah, right, so, small uh, first, right? And then you do the big one. Um, correct, right? Not. No, no, no. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. So it's wait. like one small one small triangle, then one big triangle, then one medium triangle. Then you rotate around. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, so it's like small, and then big, and then one middle, and then repeat. Ah, okay, can, can, can. Okay, thanks, Lohan. Uh, okay, let's look at a different solution. Because like, I think there's a billion ways to do this. Um... Who's above it? Ah, uh, Selena. Is it? Uh, I... Yes. Is yours similar? Mm, yeah, something the same also. Okay, so the first one, what did you do with the first one? Uh, I draw the triangle first, like the small, the big, then the center one, then the small one. Huh? Sorry? Like the, the bigger length triangle, then the middle one, then the smaller one. Ah, so in yeah. reverse order. Yeah. I okay. turn left 120 degree, then draw the second one. And okay. just repeat the same thing. All right. For the, did you attempt the second diagram? Uh, I haven't finished yet. Okay, no worries. Thank you, Selena. So that's an interesting uh, way. Okay, uh, Ifan, do you have a dif uh, different thing? Uh, it's the same solution. So for the one on the left, I just drew, drew the four triangles, rotate the 150, then repeat the three times. Ah, okay, okay. Then for the one on the right, um, I drew the small triangle, then the big triangle, mm -hmm. then rotate the 120, mm -hmm. to repeat three, uh, not, I didn't draw the middle triangle. Oh. So this one, the big one. Then repeat it three times. Oh, okay. Then afterwards, I then I went back to draw the uh, middle triangle three times. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Ifan. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see another one. Uh, I think we've got Brian right in the first place. Uh, he starts with his name starts with a P. Um, I think we haven't had. Meryl, Meryl. Uh, the first one I just drew the same as actually both of them are the same as Ethan. Okay. Ah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Meryl. Um. Does anyone have a different solution? Uh. Brandon, did you attempt it? Uh, I only did the first, the first diagram. Mm. How did you do the first one? Uh, I set the variable S to zero to mean like the one side of the triangle. Then mm. uh, counter means uh, counter means how many um, sets of triangles I draw. So like the inner set of three is one, then the second set of three is another. And the mm. last of three is the last one. Then, uh, the s plus equals two fifty is every time I finish drawing one set of three, the 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 value of s will plus two fifty uh. So, then the for i in range three is to draw one set of three. So that will be the smallest one. Then, uh, it goes back to s plus equals two fifty. So five hundred. Then it right, it draws the second set. Then the yeah, the same thing for the last set, 750. Okay, so basically this one is slightly different. This is more like question eight, uh, but being repeated three times. You start with all the small triangles first, then go middle and go up. Okay, all right. Um, at this point, like, does anyone else want to present their solution that feels that their solution has not been mentioned yet for both the first and second triangle before I... Uh, 
like share how I would approach it. Simply raise your hand or just mention your name in the chat. Oh yeah, Hannah, go ahead. Uh, wait, hold on, let me pull up your code. Eh? Can't find. Uh, Hannah, can you share which line? Ah, this one, sorry, I found it. Okay, uh, go yeah. ahead. So for my solution, I draw, um, the first function is to draw just one triangle. Then for the second one, um, it's the same as everyone are like, you just draw a like small medium shape, then you will take it 120. But I think for my the second figure, I did things a little bit uh, differently. So instead of like drawing the small and the biggest triangle, I would uh, use my first function to draw three small triangles. Then I rotated to 60 degrees to draw three medium triangles. Then I rotated to another 60 degrees to draw the largest triangle. So after the small one, you go to the middle one instead. Yeah. And then you do one last rotation to finally do the big one. All right. Oh, that's a bad triangle. All right, thanks, Hannah. Uh, interesting solution. Interesting. Any other what? Any other people? Any other students want to share your solution to be discussed? None. All right. Okay. So I think my solution uh, I would say will be closest to Hannah's. So. I think before I start, I would actually try to encapsulate things first. Lah. So, um, so say this is question seven. Say the answer to question seven, I put it in a function called question seven. And then for question eight, I put it in a function called question eight. All right. Now for this one, right, there are two ways to approach it, right, as you can see. The first way is if you use question seven and the second way is if you use question eight the yeah this one is okay so there's three different ones. so question seven is the idea is you do the question seven and then you do rotation and then you do another question seven and then do another rotation and then you do another question seven. For question eight, it means that you simply do question eight three times with various degrees. X question eight, X plus N, question eight, X plus two N, okay? So that's the two ways that you can do it. Lah. Now, in question eight, uh, for this question, right, it's actually it's not different with this one. How? As Selena has pointed out, the middle one is actually a, only being rotated. So if we should draw, this triangle is equivalent to this triangle right over here. And then uh, the big one is also the same as the big one over here. But the middle one is, the middle one is different. Lah. The middle one is actually um, rotated 60 degrees. Okay. So with that, basically this is very similar to the second approach. So if you actually attempted it with the first approach, doing the second one can be quite difficult and it's not your fault. So in this case, it's the same as question two, question eight, x plus n, question eight, x plus two n. But then in, be in, in between, you do add a rotation la for 60 degrees, I think, yes. So voila, that's the advanced challenge. 
So once you actually like try to like encapsulate things in functions and try to find patterns to reuse it, right? Things are much, much easier. Because in this case, you can simply reuse what you've written above and write it, uh, rewrite it again. So like your code can be simple. Instead of like having to copy or write down manually all those forwards and left rotations and right rotations. Are there any questions regarding this part? No questions. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So if not, we'll move on to the very last part, which is question four, which is which I assume most of you has actually done. Right. So using the same code share, right? Um, okay, I think a lot of solutions here. So I think, uh, hold on. I think this is a bit of a mess. Okay, uh, I'll push all your codes down. Uh, simply just copy your solutions above, la, uh, above the line seven and line eight. So meanwhile, as you copy, I'll try to explain the question. Basically, uh, it's like McDonald's or Krusty Krab where you need to sum up of the prizes. All right, and then in those self-checkout counters, it's going to be very difficult if you need to manually count one by one. So we need a program to be able to do that. And every ingredient is represented by a character. So how do we actually code that out, right? Um, I think some interesting things about this is that one, this will be used again in future tutorials, I think. So that's why it's very important for you to get this one right. Second, doing this question also helps you for uh, thinking on how to solve a problem because um, uh, in this particular question, it's very interesting because it doesn't tell you what to do, but in fact, it gives you a problem and you need to figure out what to do yourself. Okay. So I think last we ended up with Kelly, right? So I think you can copy, copy your code and then uh, later on, I'll give some review. Because like, this is also a chance for me to give feedback on your coding style as well. Um, let's have Hui Yong. Eh, did, eh, did, have I called Hui Yong before? Wait, Hui Yong, have I called you before? Uh, in this lecture, not yet. Okay, uh, then can you help us with question four with Burger Price? To be honest, I'm still working on it. Uh. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Oh, actually, perfect, 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 perfect. Actually, perfect. A perfect chance. You're working on it, right? Perfect. So, okay, let's go. Uh, can you share how would you actually attempt this question? Uh... It's okay, don't be nervous. Like, just like whatever goes through your mind, share it with the class. This one should use a for loop. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So let's create the criteria. Use a for loop. Some thoughts. Okay, what else, what else? What do you need to do? You want to sum up the prices, right, of each ingredient, and each ingredient has a pri uh, associated price. So if you are an actual cashier, right, that scans the items, right, How? what would you do? Uh, I can't think of it right now. Something of it. Okay, okay. Uh, in real life, in real life, say like say you are a cashier at fair price, right? And then you have a list of items like in the basket, right? And then you need to calculate the price, right? What would you do as the fair price cashier? What are the step the steps that you're gonna do? Go through each item first. Go through each item, right? And then for each item, what do you do? 
to check the price. Check the price. And then after you check the price, oh, okay, so this detergent is $10. What do you do? Sum everything up. Sum everything up, okay. So here's uh, here are the steps, lah. like, so use these steps, lah. so like, first, how do you go through each item? Say you have a burger. Say burger is a BPB. So create a string and attach a value to each to each value. Um hold on, hold on, not so fast. How do you go through each item first? Okay, so um, there are two ways lah, which most of you did. The first way is actually you iterate through the string. So you can do like for I in burger. This is what most people did lah. But what we have taught you in class is that, remember in the previous class, right? we taught you indexing. So you can actually uh, go through the ingredients by uh, indexing them like burger zero for ingredient zero, burger one at ingredient one, and burger two at ingredient two. This is what we have taught you in class. So if you iterate through this way, right? How, how are you going to iterate? For I in range zero to six. Why six? There's six characters here. Uh, no, oh. burger is a variable name. You don't know the length of the burger, right? So you need to figure out the length of the burger. How do you figure out the length of the burger? So in this case, it's just three, right? B, P, B. Mm -hmm. This is an example, but then like your function should be able to accept any length of the burger. Okay. Chun Ying mentions you can use learn burger. So we can actually check the length of the burger, the length of the string using learn burger. Okay. Okay. Now with that, we can actually iterate through each item, right? Hui Yong. So probably like ingredient is equals to burger. And then you take the index. Is this correct? Yes. Okay. Now. We've done step one, right? Then we need to do step two. We need to check the price. How do you check the price? Assign a value to each, to each letter. Mm -hmm. So example, like we have, the current ingredient is letter B. How do you check the price of letter B? B equal equal 0.5. Mm, nope. Try again, try again. We have this table up here, right? We have this table up here. Uh, if we need to check, right? What is the ingredient equals to B? Is, is the ingredient equals to C? Is it equal to P? And if we want to check whether it's equal to this, this, or this, right? What do you use? It's right above here, like somewhere above here. Which one do you use? There's repetition, there's... Um, Selection, which one do you use? Selection. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to write your selection? If B, B equal, equal to 0 0.5, return true. No la. If the ingredient is equal to B, right? You want to check whether the ingredient is equal to B. Then if the ingredient is equal to B, then the price of the ingredient will be 0 0.5. Because technically, if you check B equals to 0 0.5, right? It will never be equal. This will always be false. Because like one is the letter B and the other is a number 0 0.5. So here, what we want to check is, is the ingredient B is the ingredient uh, P
and so on, right? So this is where you check the price. Now, once you actually get the price, right? You need to sum the price, right? So how do you sum the price up? Wait, wrong. Yeah, sorry, thinking. Uh, okay. I think you can check at question. Oh God, question. Question six. Question six. 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 Question six tries to sum the odd numbers, right? How do they actually sum all the odd numbers here? So just replace the low and high with the string of burger. The In this case, order. yeah. La. In this case, it's very similar. In this case, it's the string of burger. But then, like, how do they actually sum up the integers? When they sum up, right, you, you need two things. First, it's actually a variable to store your total over here. And second is your, your line where you actually ask it to sum it up to your total. So imagine like a calculator. Lah. So like you need somewhere to store your numbers first. In this case, uh, we'll need to add a total, a variable total first in the top equals to zero. So like technically there's no, no burger. Lah. And the price is zero, right? And then like every ingredient, right? You add the total with the price that you have determined of the ingredient. Once you go through all the ingredients, then you have the total. Lah. Then you simply return total. Okay. Okay. So um, I know like most of you in this class already are able to do this. Question four. Like that's evident from uh, the code share. But the point here is not really about like writing the best, the right code. Lah. But the point here is to actually like think of like the right steps to approach to an answer. And in this case, right, we don't immediately write the entire code in its entirety, but we build it step by step, right? So really, like coding is not really somewhat, somewhat very foreign. It is still very human. Like, see, we go through a very human process. We need to go through each item, check the price and sum everything up. And then from this thing, we, thought, we try to translate it into code, okay? so. Whenever you face problems, right, always try to come up with the English layman steps first before you actually write your code. In fact, I think like a piece of advice that I always tell people, right, is that um, whenever you are faced with a problem, right, the first thing that you should touch is not your keyboard, but it should be your pen and paper to plan out your steps, to plan out what are you going to do. Once you plan things out, then you actually type your code out. So in this case, we actually start step by step. We try to build the iteration part first. Then we build the checking price feature first. Then we build on the summing everything up feature first. You don't just jump into conclusions. Now, onto, your, onto some of your answers. Most of you did it the same. Uh, this one is iterating through the characters in the burger. Most of you got it right. This is the same. Ah, this one is slightly more unique. This one uses a while loop. And then while the index has not reached the end of the burger, you keep on plusing one. Oh, one. Okay, so Ifan, regarding this, right, I have some feedback for this. Um, uh, generally you should not use um some words as a variable name. And those some words are usually what we call reserved keywords. Um, you can actually search here, Python reserve keywords. You should not use these keywords as a variable name. Lah. And in some cases, the word sum is also a function name. So like, you can actually do like sum of like 
10, 9, and 8. Hence, it is not advisable usually to use uh, function names as your variable names. So use something else, lah. like usually if I'm too lazy, I'll add uh, two M's in the back. So this is the list, list of keywords that you should not use as a variable name. There are many more, lah, but then the idea is you should not use function names as variable keywords as it might break your code. Oh, Chun Ying, uh, you already use a dictionary. Very fancy one. Um, this is probably still two tu tutorials ahead, but okay. Um, this one also, Brian. So just avoid using the word sum as a variable name. Um, yeah, I think mostly all of you got it right. Um, I don't think it's a difficult question, but the point of it is to actually really like to practice your skills. Oh, Brandon, very interesting. Uh, okay. Um, Brandon, are you there? Would you kindly oh, explain I your code? It's not wrong, it's not wrong, but could you explain your code? Uh, I just went to Google, then I found the the count function, which just counts the the number of letters in a in the string, yeah. Then I just multiplied it by the price. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So this is another way. Like, see, like, there's a lot of ways to do it, uh. Okay. Um. This one, like, instead of manually counting, like, technically, this is manually counting, right? This is like basically counting using an inbuilt method inside python so this is a burger is a string right so there's an inbuilt function already or inbuilt method where it automatically counts all the characters inside the string given the input lah. so it really takes advantage of python's functionalities in which it's good but it might be prohibited during exams okay it might be i'm not saying with full certainty that it will be but there will be cases where it might be prohibited. So be careful. Um, in case it is prohibited, you always need to find a way to do it with other ways. Generally, things that are already taught in class. This one is same, Jonathan. Hannah allows for many orders. Okay. I think the other thing that I like is the, uh, another advice that I would say is that use uh, variable names that are descriptive. So yes, like sometimes using I and range length is convenient, but then like use something, you can use sometimes something that are more descriptive. Lah. Like for example, like this, right? For I and burger, we don't really know what I is, right? So like perhaps you can write, like say, uh, instead of I, you could actually use like, uh, I think like for ingredient in burger, then like if ingredient is equals to B, then you add it up. If ingredients equals to that, add it up. So something like that. Lah. Use something that is more descriptive because it also helps you to debug your code. Well done, everyone. Okay, so I think that's our tutorial for today. Um, I think one last thing uh, before I dismiss this class and everyone heads off for the Chinese New Year is I want to share a bit on how cosmology works. Okay? Because I think some of you actually was confused with the test cases in cosmology and it affects your grades. So it's actually pretty important, right, for me to share this. So in cosmology, right, there are three types of test cases that you need to know. Public test case, private test case, and then evaluation test case. Public and private are the test cases that you can see whether you got it right or wrong. And evaluation is something that you cannot see regardless of your result, whether you got it right or wrong. So the public test case is the test cases that are public. Lah. You can see the input, you can see the output, you can see your own output. Usually it's also in the question PDF, it's on cosmology, and then you can see whether it's correct or not. Lah. The private test case is similar to public, but you cannot see 
what you got wrong. You cannot see the input, you cannot see the output, and you cannot see your own output. Because you can see the public and the private test case, before you submit your assignments, right, make sure that you got public, you pass both public and private test cases. Okay? Don't submit code where you fail one of the test cases, okay? Because if you fail one of these test cases, confirm your code is wrong. It is highly, highly unlikely that the test cases themselves are wrong. There are cases where they are wrong, but it is highly unlikely. So whenever you get the test cases wrong, most likely your code is wrong. Now, the, onto the evaluation test case, right? You cannot see it because the purpose of evaluation test case is for the graders, our internal graders, to actually grade your assignments. All right, we will test your code. We will really stress test them, stretch them to the limit, test edge cases on your code to see whether your code satisfy all possible conditions. So, uh, in summary, TLDR, TLDR, um, you must pass all public and private test cases, but passing public and private does not guarantee that your code is correct. Okay. Failing public and private will certainly, certainly means your code is wrong, but passing both of them doesn't mean your code is right. Sometimes the private test cases seems wrong. Will internal graders still read the code in such cases? Uh, for this particular semester, for this particular semester, yes. Eh, for this particular semester, uh, sometimes we need to remind the uh, grader to read the code. I think the private test cases will only be wrong for turtle because the turtle test cases are slightly funky because we need to be able to see the lines. Ah. But for the rest of the assignments, we it is highly unlikely that the test cases are wrong. So aside from turtle, it is highly unlikely that they will be wrong. Lah. If, it, if the test cases are wrong, usually we'll probably do a... Uh, correction and not notify the cohort. So just let us know. Lah. I mean, we're not perfect as well. We're, we're still humans. For total, is it necessary that the ending direction of the arrow matters or just the figure that matters? Um, it's a hard question because I remember the way the total test cases were built was that it simply just checks for the movement. So it's not the figure, it's also not the ending direction, but it's the movement of the pen. So if somehow you got the picture right, but then the movements are not as intended in the first place, then you might fail the test case. But that's fine. For Toto, Toto is probably the only one where we uh, can accept you failing the private test case. Because yeah, what matters is the final image. So that one you don't have to worry. And I think the totals are ungraded as well, right? So not much of a worry. Okay, any other questions? Regarding assignments, tutorials. Okay, uh, just like uh, one last thing. Uh, don't forget to join the Telegram group uh, in case you missed it. Uh, I'll just reshare it in the chat over here. So that um, everyone that can want to join can join. And then uh, if there's nothing else, then thank you guys for coming this week. Uh, happy Chinese New Year and class is dismissed. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh... Okay. All right, if there are no questions, then I'll just stop the meeting here.